Hey there, Dan Gastu here. Today's video is about remotely monitoring a boat using the Raymarine Yacht Sense Link and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. As you guys know, I've been pretty busy with work at the moment uh, and I need to go overseas for work in a couple of weeks. So I'm going to install this Raymarine Yacht Sense Link as a way of monitoring Renko while I'm away. As well as being a way of monitoring the boat, it's obviously a way of connecting to the internet, hence being able to monitor it remotely. So it serves a couple of purposes. One is it gives you a good strong internet connection on the boat if you're within cellular range, you're not looking for Starlink or whatever, but you're looking for something much better than just tethering to your phone. And the other is that it can send information out to the internet or back into the boat. All right, let's uh, have a look in the box and I'll show you what you get to start with. All right, let's have a little look in the box. Instructions. Unit. Accessory pack. Lots of cables. Oh, that's interesting. So it's the uh, Raymarine Ethernet to a standard RJ45. Could be very handy. This looks like power. Ah, now. This is the antenna for the unit. which has five, I believe they said, five leads on it. It's getting dangerously close to that point where I'm going to have to read the manual, isn't it? Let's have a little look what's in the accessory pack first. Okay, uh, antennas. These, I believe, are the internal antennas for the Wi-Fi, whereas you have 4Gs from above. Uh, locking collar. Ah, uh, looks like you can pass the cables through. That's interesting. Okay. That looks like a mounting for the antenna. And this. Presumably it's like a gold coin or something, maybe. Oh, no. Screws. All right. I'm going to do a bit of reading and get back to you. The reason I got this unit wasn't for the networking capabilities as such, because I already had a small uh, Wi-Fi hotspot that connects to the cellular network and a couple of the Ethernet hubs. I will, however, get rid of that small uh, Wi-Fi hotspot because it's not in any way integrated to the network. It's just a Wi-Fi hotspot that plugs into power. Whereas this can feed network connectivity into the Ethernet network and allow things like the multifunction display to use the network, get updates to the Lighthouse software, all that kind of stuff. So that's really good. But the main reason I got it was because it has four digital inputs and outputs. This allows me to monitor things like, is the build truck coming on? Uh, is the battery going flat? And is the boat still in the same position? You can use it for a you know, 101 things. You've got four ins and four outs, so you can control various things on the boat as well remotely. You can say, I want you to turn on X, Y, Z, you know, I'm coming to the boat, turn the fridge on, I'll be there in two hours or whatever. Uh, it also allows you to just arbitrarily add inputs, like if either of these doors open, set an alarm off, you know, things like that. Or, uh, you know, if, has the boat moved from its uh, geofencing? If it has, either it's been stolen, which will be the world's slowest police chase ever in Renko, or uh, the mooring's broken, you know, or the anchor's dragging, that kind of thing. So this is the monitor I'm talking about for while I'm overseas. Now, the inputs can be configured to either be digital inputs, i.e. just on or off. There's a switch on the door, like a reed switch. When the door opens, it's either open or close, on or off. Then you've got your analog inputs, which are where is the battery voltage? You know, is it sitting at 28 volts or is it sitting at, you know, 18 volts? Is it going flat? And that's the sort of thing you need to know, obviously, for things like bilge pumps. So really important things to monitor. But they're the two main modes, just on off things like doors opening and sliding scale things like battery voltage. There's a section here on the outputs. And obviously you put a relatively low current, saying about 200 milliamps, for the output channel, but you feed that into an automotive relay and that's what allows you to do something like activate a loud siren or whatever it is you want to do. But pretty standard thing. It puts a, uh, a low current signal out. Think of this a little bit like last week where we talked about the uh, 
key switch on the outboard. So a small current comes from this key switch, then it goes to a relay, which then activates, say, a solenoid to start the starter motor. Same thing here. A small current triggering a large current to run the thing you want to turn on. I reckon we just start by getting power to it and seeing if we can both connect to the internet and connect to it using the iPad. It's only a web browser, you know, common interface to these types of things, so let's see what happens. In this corner, I have, <laughs> this is the classic thing here, isn't it? A bit of mud around here. This is the HS5. These are the network switches, so you're essentially getting one of these with this unit built in. Uh, the uh, little paper wasp has decided to live in that screw hole. Not the end of the earth, because it's a marinized unit, but typical. Uh, all right, we do have power here, though. This uh, is a 12 volt uh, station, USB, that kind of stuff. A little bit of a subboard fuse thing here. So I think this is the easy way. This seems to be the obvious place for me to keep this unit. Um, we've got networking stuff here. We've got access to the to the roof of the wheelhouse up here. So I'm kind of thinking somewhere along here probably isn't a bad way to go. My plan ultimately was to have a panel that covers these wires, much like this one, there's a lot of wires in here. A mate on the island, Ron, made uh, that for me very nicely. Uh, and something like that is what I'm thinking over here. So maybe I won't rush into the mounting yet. I'm thinking I'm gonna cut this fuse holder off. Don't ever be, you know, don't ever be shy to modify things like this. If you've got a fuse holder, they're all blade fuses. I've got spare capacity there. You know, you need a fuse. I'm not saying cut it off and just have nothing, but don't feel that you need to use this. It's just a fuse. It doesn't have to be this style. I'd rather have it into here. So I'm going to cut this off. Then we're going to put a terminal, connect power to here. Actually, before I put power in, I think I'm going to put a SIM card in it. I presume this just flips up. unit supports two SIM cards, but I'm only putting one in for now. But I can see how it's good redundancy. Sometimes you could even have them like separate network providers, different towers, better coverage, but I only got one. I think I need a SIM card somewhere between the two I have. Oh dear. Okay, turns out this unit takes micro SIMs I've got a nano sim with an adapter up to a mini sim. I'm gonna cut the original fuse holder off and then just put a spade connector on because that's what this little uh, house block has. Doesn't have a huge amount of cable left, but I think you and I can cope with that together. Apparently twisting the wires actually makes the connection weaker, but. It's physically impossible for me not to do it now. Give it a little tug. It's never a bad thing to do. Just to make sure it doesn't fall off. Better off find out now than kid yourself that it's a good connection. We're going to put ground and negative onto there. I've got the negative of the boat bound to the hull. These electrical connectors, the colour determines the size of the wire that will fit in them. Uh, yellows larger than the blue so i could get a yellow one put these together and put it on the stud i think i'll just put a blue on each one and double them up on the stud because there's plenty of thread left okay power here let's plug this in uh this little box actually has a, a gland here on the side way too small to take this new cable it's actually broken anyway I think I need to fix that. Seemed like a good idea buying a cheap little bamboo, you know, pencil box, but I think it was slightly ill-conceived. Anyway, let's uh, just plug the power in and I'll deal with that later. This is kind of cool. These LEDs light up if it's trying to draw power, but there's fuses blown, so it's a good way to see a blown fuse. That's actually quite nice. All right, we need an eight amp fuse. Looks like these others are 7.5s. I think it's either 7.5 or 10, so we might start with the 7.5 and see if it blows ever. Let's go 7.5. I reckon it'll be enough. And then presumably light goes out. I'm liking that. Don't know what brand that is, but I like that feature. All right, we now have power to the Yacht Sense link. 
Let's see if we can connect to it. Uh, okay, anyway, well, we can actually give it more network too. That's not hard. I have a C-Talk hub here with a couple of blanks in it. So that's nice. Take that out, that's our spare. That's just been keeping the dirt out of the connector while it's not being used. So let's connect that up. It's the SDNG. Sea Talk Next Generation, New Generation, Sting from the Police, who knows. So, theoretically, that should give us our Sea Talk connectivity, which is NMEA. Now, we can also connect this hub to this one so they're all on one network. Okay, I presume this guy, or probably this guy isn't happy due to no SIM card. Oh, actually, that's what we haven't done. Uh, there is obviously the big antenna for the roof for 3G, but there's also the, just the Wi-Fi antenna. So we may as well put those on while we're here. Just these little fellas. I feel like we're achieving great things. But I think my next thing is a SIM card. Uh, now, what are that? So this is the, these two are the inputs and the outputs. They're bare wires because this is, you know, very sort of bespoke stuff that you configure based on what you intend to uh, monitor on your boat and control. These Raynet connectors are the Raymarine waterproof versions of these RJ45s that are more designed for the office. Uh, I'm gonna plug this into here because this is going to be good for connecting like a laptop or something but I need to get another cable with this Raynet on both ends so that I can connect this unit to the other network so it's all one network to this switch so got to get the SIM adapter and a Raynet to Raynet cable I think that's my next step I ordered some SIM card adapters and a Raynet cable, which have both arrived now. This little kit had uh, three adapters and one of these little iPhone openers, so that'll get us out of trouble. Here we've got a pretty standard uh, Raynet to Raynet cable, female, to get from the YachtSense link to Renko's Ethernet network, so they're all connected. This is a reason I would really argue that, you know, if I had my time again, I'd probably start with this as the backbone of your network, because it gives you so much. It gives you the monitoring, gives you the 3G, uh, 4G connectivity, and actually acts as a four port hub on its own. So I think I'd go this as the sort of backbone of your network, and then just expand with extra hubs as you need more connectivity, if you need it. All right, very windy today, but we're gonna head up river and go and see Adrian, why not? Heading overseas during the week, last chance to say goodbye. Chop today. About 30 knots, I think they were saying. <clears throat> we're here. Let's uh, go see Uncle Adrian and see what's happening with Mumwood. I think it's getting close to being ready to uh, blast and prime. It's certainly come a long way. Still got to put a end on the sponsor. It's looking good, mate. Not there. Yeah. A bit of paint not there anymore. Yeah, yeah. It looks very different from when it first got here. Well, most of the holes are all plugged. Yeah. All the holes are plugged there. I've yeah. Got a few trades at the world up. But... Just the end cap on the sponsor. Yeah, well, I've got to get the pipe in there. Oh, that's right. You go on the half round or? No, no, just get to put a full piece of pipe in. Yeah, nice. Just get it wedged in. Yep, wedged That'll in. be nice. Be strong. Yeah, it'll make the whole fight. Then yeah. it'll be, there'll be no chipping on the paint and have to worry about it. Are you going to do a stainless pipe? Yep. Yeah, nice.
to the ground. Heavy bastard! Oh, I go then. Just drop it. That's heavy. Wait to it. <laughs> run, grab it, run. <laughs> run, Forrest! Let's put this SIM card in. Now we have the right adapter. They give you the orientation SIM cards here and then push down and slide into lock. All right. A nice kind of rubber seal, get the moisture out. I'm going to connect it to the hub here so the whole Ethernet network is connected. Then we'll jump on the computer and start configuring it. All right, net one. That seems like a good choice all right one more port free here which is good it's got a blanking plug it is look at that let's take the cover off looks like there's three ways you configure it uh, one is by a wired connection that involves using this cable that came with the unit which is essentially the raynet to a standard rj45 not as waterproof as these o-ring sealed ones but obviously very uh, ubiquitous so it's good to have that the other is to use the uh, mfd the multifunction display because it's on the network and it can configure it too third way is just to jump on the laptop and use a wi-fi connection to here rather than the hardwired connection okay boat system detected are you the owner of this boat hmm. It's a deeply philosophical question, but please confirm the pop-up on your Axiom. Ah, okay. Yes here. Sorry about the frame rate mismatch. Yes. So. That's pretty cool. Display mirroring. There used to be a couple of Raymarine apps. Uh, one for controlling things, one for viewing, this kind of thing. Now they've all been merged into a single Raymarine app, which is what I've got running here and the main option it's gone to is mirroring the screen. I am going to configure it using my laptop with Wi-Fi uh, and then I'm going to use it to download the latest version of Lighthouse. Default uh, network name and passwords on the side of the box so we'll log in using that and then change that obviously. Okay I am doing some software updates on the Axiom and in the meantime I'm going to make a cable to go from this ground point just to battery ground here. I'm going to talk to John from Raymarine because the instructions actually say to use quite a heavy gauge cable, so it can carry about 30 amps, and go a short distance. So I'm almost thinking we can go to the uh, hull of the boat. We're not sending current through the hull, it's just a, an earth essentially. We're using battery negative as a ground, and our battery negative is bonded to the hull. So. I'll chat with him to confirm as well. But in the meantime, I'm just going to make up a short one. I think it's going to be better than nothing, even though it's not going to be a very heavy gauge. So we've got a small ground just to here. I am having trouble, I think, connecting to the internet because I didn't pay my phone bill. I just paid it then but it looks like they're not going to um, reactivate it straight away. So uh, where did I see that again? I think it was just in info, no, status, there we go. Yes, no service. All right, it's getting dark, time to head home, sun setting. Tomorrow though, I'm gonna get some bits and pieces and we'll start playing with the inputs and outputs on this device and sort of show you what it's uh, party trick is. Aliens, or maybe a light show, it's hard to tell which. I've taken our input cable and I've put the negative onto our battery and we now have four other leads, one for each channel, the colour codings on the sticker here. What I have is channel two, which I now call back door, which is going to be a read switch for that door, uh, marked as inactive. Actually, now I think about it, because I've only got four channels, I'm going to go back into channel configuration. And I'm actually going to 
edit that to just doors because I'm going to use one channel and if either door opens um, it'll set that alarm off. Then we've got channel one to voltage detect. So, okay we've gone back to monitoring and now if I just touch this lead to some power we should see it change to active. It's about now uh, things took a little bit of a turn for the worse. Um, the footage you last saw was the day before I left to come overseas. I'm in Bali at the moment. I'll be here for three months, so I'm glad I finally got this monitoring set up. But uh, the day I got on the boat, the bilge pump wasn't working properly, two of them, uh, for various reasons, and there was water in the boat. So I really wish I'd installed this uh, Yacht Sense link uh, a month ago, or even a week ago. Uh, it almost seems... Uh, you know, ridiculous that this should happen during the filming of a video on monitoring your bilges. But anyway, it goes to show how important it is. So let's get on with it. I'll pick up from the final day before I'm leaving Sydney and we'll uh, start by uh, getting some water out of the boat. Sit rep. So, what should we call it? Stateroom. Stateroom sounds nice. Full of water. Engine bay fine. All right, I am going to lift the mattress here which means we can get to the low point of the compartment and we can bail the water into the engine bay, which will throw the water overboard with the bilge pumps. Uh, I'll show you how it gets in here and what we can do about that too. This hatch actually is a watertight hatch, so if I close it, it would have to get very, very high before it came in here. All right, oh dear. So this is under the bed, oh dear. There's the uh, cables for the Raymarine transducers, which are quite waterproof, which is great. But that is quite a bit of water to bail out. What you'll see, uh, it's actually right down there. There, you see that pipe there? Once the water gets to that level, it comes in. If I just, let me have a look here. Yeah, it's actually threaded. If I put a cap on that, it'll stop water coming through there. It was a part of the whole sea chest uh, Jabsco manifold system that is long gone. Mm, dear. Poor engine bay. What's so shiny? Oh well, that's boats. Wonder how many hours of my life I've spent bailing boats. Got to be in the hundreds by now, surely. Could have got into horse riding. Pottery. Had to be both, didn't it? Two things we can do, obviously. Uh, make sure that this is a watertight bulkhead. That's a no-brainer, that's a cap and a bit of sealant. I could also attach a bilge pump outlet to that pipe instead of blocking it off. Uh, there is merit to that. It stops it uh, coming through, put a one-way valve on it, and uh, it just means it'll pump out of here, pump into there, pump overboard, which stops having more and more sort of skin fittings. So, uh, we will see. Ultimately, I think remote notification on my phone that the water has got above the top of the bilge pump here. That's the key. That's what this is all about. The Yacht Sense Link gives you a whole lot of uh, basic internet networking connectivity on your boat, but Essentially, it would have sent an alarm to my phone if I had done this, you know, <laughs> a couple of weeks earlier. Um, and I would have known straight away. Wouldn't have been a problem. A friend of mine, Andrew Tinnick, said, oh, it looks expensive. And I said, oh, it's a lot less expensive than sinking your boat. And he went, yeah, fair point. <laughs> anyway, how's your day going? Somebody actually did mention quite early in this video series how easy it is to have those rocker switches end up off. And I'm starting to agree with them. I think uh, 
I need to get it to the point where the bilge pumps are on auto by default and it's a very, very conscious action to turn them either manually on with a momentary switch or off is like, why? You know, why ever be off? Maybe they're stuck on. I can see that being a reason, but it shouldn't be something you can do accidentally. <laughs> I'm on a bit of a rant now, but it uh, it also makes me realize how, um, push pumps work, uh, how you, you know, you spend a couple hundred bucks subscribing to this annually with Rain Rain. And I get that, they run the servers, they, you know, they do all that stuff for you. Yes, you can get a microcontroller, you can write code, you can install um, Signal K, you know, uh, yeah, you can do it the hard way. Um, but I would be surprised though if insurance companies didn't say, well, you've got your boat monitored. Um, I'm going to take those uh, subscription costs off your premiums because we know your boat is so much safer. All right, that'll do. Maybe I pack a suitcase. Ah, oh, man. <sighs> I'd say. Uh, not getting any service from the mobile, but it has just occurred to me, I know, I'm slow, that perhaps this doesn't enhance mobile reception, it is your only mobile reception. So I haven't got time to mount it, but I am going to plug all the plugs into here because we will get mobile reception inside the cabin. We are going to get this five-way antenna connected and we are going to see whether we then get mobile network. I definitely did have a disconnected service, but I paid the bill like three days ago. It should be connected. I think now it is simply the fact that this doesn't have a small antenna in it with, you know, enhanced reception by this it needs this for reception so let's plug this in see how we go all the connectors are here what have we got diversity cellular oh the dock land we talked about which is the um you know wi-fi you get in marinas so basically uh, uh i did read about diversity a professional youtuber would tell you what that is but i work in it now you can see here each uh cable is labeled so we just Match them up to the connectors. All five connectors from the antenna connected. Yes, it's not on the uh, roof of the wheelhouse yet, but should give us mobile reception. I think that is now the issue that I've actually paid my bill. Okie dokie. All right, I'm going to look up what diversity is, because I feel it'll be a terrible video if I can't tell you. Oh, dear. The water's supposed to be on the outside of your boat. That's the rules. Let's have a look. It's all right. Don't fly till four in the morning. Plenty of time to sort this out. Library, yacht sense. I'd never heard of diversity, but it looks like it's some form of um, cellular network connection. So we've got uh, two uh, two antennas for mobile reception, 3G, 2G, 3G, 4G, and diversity, I think. Anyway, that's good. They're connected. Let's see whether we now have mobile reception, because that's obviously critical in order for us to send things like high water alarm to my phone while I'm overseas. Uh, yes, look at that. Turns out that uh, it isn't a case of having an external antenna, it's a case of being the antenna, so that's fine. My bad, but now uh, you know as well. We have paid our bill, connected our antenna, we have connectivity. So the stone gland in Renko leaks like a sieve after it's run. It slows down a bit after it sits for a while, but it clearly needs work. I want to do some prop shaft work, I want to put the bigger prop on, and at the same time, I'm gonna redo the stern gland. Uh, when I was talking to Adrian, we had a good chat about it, didn't film it, but we had a good chat about how he plans to do the stern gland on my moot. And I think I'm gonna go with a similar system. It accommodates a little bit more uh, misalignment of the engine. I think that's where I come unstuck. The engine sort of does a slight ellipsis, uh, opens the packing up a bit, and it takes a while to, um, to close up again. All right, 
Now, it's saying here that it's not connected to a my Raid Marine app. I think that's because I hit the reset button. I thought reset just was sort of off and on, but it turns out I think it goes back to factory default. So there you go. Yeah, restart factory reset. I think that's what I did. Interesting here, even though the GPS antennas in the cabin in the steel boat, I still seem to be getting a fix, which is great. Goes to show how much better it's going to be when it's actually on the, uh, the deck head. Uh, all right, let's go to what I need to do, I think, is reconnect this to my Raymarine account. Okie dokie, here we are. Uh, let's go into the Raymarine app. And it's saying to activate a Yacht Sense link router, scan the QR code which is on the unit. So enable camera. Yes, one access. There. So yes, I think you saw this earlier. This is when I first, oh, boat name already exists. That's an issue. Can I just connect to that? I actually think after that I did MV Renko. And it already existed. How do I connect to an existing boat? Steel Motor Cruiser Renko. So what you can see here is what I did previously that I filmed without audio. I set a analog input, which was the 12 volt battery bank. And I set an on off digital switch, which is the doors. I'll show you again now, but uh, I missed a lot of audio on the previous thing. And what I was explaining was that you have four input channels on the Yacht Sense. You get a lot more data because you're also connected to your NMEA network. So if you have any NMEA data, that's available straight away. What you have in addition to the NMEA data though is four input channels. Those four channels can be configured through the website, which I'll show you in a second, to either be analog, i.e. zero to something voltage, or simply on or off. I think the distinction is above eight volts is on, below eight volts is off. And the idea there is things like a high water alarm, which I would have needed yesterday. You simply go and get a very simple float switch from someone like marineengine.com and you plug it into that channel. When the switch comes on, it's activated. The other thing you do is monitor uh, shades of grey, such as what's my battery voltage. I would have seen that my house vault was at 10 volts because I would definitely set an alarm for like below 12 volts. Tell me when it gets below 12. So that's what you can configure these four channels to be. I've decided to have one channel being if either door in the wheelhouse opens. So as soon as someone comes in the boat, you get an alarm. I've got a high water alarm, which is on and off as well. And then I'm going to have two sort of analog inputs, which is the current voltage of the 12 volt bank and the current voltage of the 24 volt bank. That's how I'm going to use those four channels. All right. I will now show you how you do that. What you have is in advanced settings, your inputs and outputs. So here is the monitoring of these channels. I have set up the 12 volt bank to be uh, channel one. All it simply is channel one is connected to here, a really small fuse rating on the 12 volt battery bank. As long as it's got a voltage, it can tell me on the screen what it is. It's saying 12.8, this little sort of cheapy, you know, um, you know, USB charge is saying 12.6, but I certainly trust this a bit more. Then I have another channel, which is the doors. The plan is to have some reed switches, which have arrived, so I'm gonna do that quickly, but they are just reed switches, security switches, go on the frame, on the door, when it opens, alarm goes off. When you have a digital channel, now let's go configuration. So here's doors. You can set here whether it's normally open or normally closed. So that's what we want for the doors. Depending on how the reed switches work, ideally you want it so that you've got current flowing when they're closed. So if someone cuts a wire, the alarm goes off instead of cutting a wire being a way of, you know, um, circumventing the security system. What I would also then do is say another input, I would edit it and I'm going to say this channel is high water alarm. 
and I'm going to say it is, now let me get this right, it's normally closed because when the bilge pump opens and allows current to flow, we want the high water alarm to go off. Then here at some point, I am also going to say my 24 volt bank, uh, battery bank, probably not going to happen before I go, but it's an analog voltage to take. So it'll tell me my 12 volt bank voltage, my 24 volt bank voltage, whether any of the doors are open or whether, oh, look at that, whether the high water alarm has gone off. And I think that's pretty good use of those four channels. Now let's have a look at our doors. We had doors as channel two. And if we look on our little sticker here, it says channel two, input two is yellow, which is this one. What you can see here, this is the yellow wire. This is what would go to my reed switches on the door. And we've got, it's currently active because there's no power. And as soon as power goes on, you'll see it changes to inactive. So really what we're saying is we want to be supplying a really small current to that channel the whole time, to the reed switch. And then as soon as we break the wire, which is either cutting the wire with cutters or opening the door, it disconnects, the power comes off and it goes to active and the alarm goes off. How you configure these channels depends a lot on what you're doing with them. I think for the door, I'm going to have them set so there's normally closed, i.e. current is normally flowing. The absence of current sets off the alarm. Whereas with the bilge pump, I'm gonna have it normally open and when the switch becomes active, the high water alarm goes off. Now, we also have four output channels. We have all these outputs and I could say here, this is goes to a fridge. I want the fridge to go on when I activate that. And here is one that I want to edit and I just want to have a siren. I want the ability to manually make a loud siren go on. If somebody just phones me and goes, there's someone on your boat. And you go, oh, hit that, siren will go off. Uh, you know, this is the sort of thing you can do uh, through this. You can control four DC devices through this as well. So you have four inputs, four outputs. Well, thanks for watching. Sorry it's taken so long to get this video out. Uh, the good news though is that uh, the project I'm working on reached a particularly significant milestone, which means I may have a little bit more time, which would be nice. Uh, while I'm in Bali, here for another couple of months still, uh, we'll probably be doing a bit of diving and maybe a bit of boating. Uh, so it'd be interesting to see what we see. I think there's some good stuff to explore while we're here. With regards to the Yacht Sense Link though, uh, I think having seen it now, I would have made it almost the heart of my network on the boat. Uh, I wasn't really aware of it at the time, uh, but the fact is it gives you your first four port hub for your ethernet network, which is great. I had one anyway. Uh, so why not make that your first one? It also then gives you your sort of 4G cellular mobile connectivity, which is awesome as well. It also bridges between your NMEA network and the ethernet network and it gives you all this ability to monitor and control the boat remotely. So to me, it's a bit of a no-brainer, you know, put it in first and then expand your network as you need to. Having Renko fill up with water like the day I was leaving was stressful, uh, you know, it felt almost like people will go, oh, you faked that, you know, to show why you have to monitor your boat. And trust me, I, I don't fill my boats with water by choice. When I went to edit this video, I realized I didn't capture a lot of what Adrian was doing with his boat. So be sure to check out his channel. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, but he and I had a really good chat about uh, sealing the stern gland, how he's going to do his. All right. Well, I'll catch you soon. Um, I actually spoke to a guy last night, uh, the CEO of the company I'm working with at the moment, um, has a friend who runs a big dive charter boat and uh, he was talking about uh, having a look at that and looking particularly at the engines and the engineering stuff. So that is probably when I'll see you next. All right, take care, I'll catch you then. See ya.